Hello and welcome again to the course on machine learning. Today we'll be reviewing how to represent data. Now obviously this with a focus on machine learning. Data is usually represented as vectors in machine learning and this is with a reason. We're actually dealing with attribute value pairs so it allows us to visualize and perform operations on these vectors to obtain results, classifications, clusters, etc, etc. Now, what do I mean with this? Let's start with a, a brief example. So, let me just change colors. Let's start with vector A, for example. Now, if you don't have a full understanding on vectors, I suggest you go look at the um, Khan Academy videos on vectors, which are quite easy to understand, and then come back here. Now, let's say we've got this vector. We want to represent the height of a person. So let's say we've got 120 centimeters. Then we can have vector B, and that's maybe I don't know, 170 centimeters. So the good thing about using vectors is that we can actually represent this visually. So we've got single vector, one dimension, and let's say 0 centimeters, 100 and 200. So this data point lies about here approximately. And so let's say A and B lies about here, 170. So we can actually have more than one dimension. Let's say C is um, let's say we're talking about the size of a picture frame. So we've got maybe 50 and we've got 60. So we can actually, uh, well, let's say just another one. We've got um, 20 and we've got 100. Let's say it's uh, width and height. So this is a quite tall one. And we can represent this data in two dimensions. So let's say we've got, let's state that this one is width and this is height. We've got 150, 0, 0, 50, and 100. So C would lie 50 uh, about here approximately and D would lie about here. So it's good because we can actually represent this visually and get an idea of how our data set looks. So we can maybe draw a line from this to this and that's the good thing about vectors, we can actually get like the angle between them to perform comparisons, we can get sums, um, etc, etc, like product, dot products, etc. So, then further on we've got three-dimensional ones. Let's say we're measuring the size of a parcel, so we've got maybe 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 30 centimeters. So it's height, width, and length. And this might be useful, let's say, in a post office or something similar. And we can also represent that, obviously, with th three dimensions. Um, now, let's say for a post office, using that same example, weight also matters. So maybe you've got width, height, length, let's say, I don't know, 55 centimeters, and weight, 10 kilograms. And obviously, this is useful for them, and a lot of them actually use this information to predict the prices. So, the next thing I'm going to do is, well, before I, I, I move on, I want to state, what are the different types of data we can represent in, in vectors? So let's state this, data types. The most common ones are 
categorical ordinal and numeric. So what do I mean with this? Well, categorical is basically a category that doesn't have a specific order, say red, green, I don't know, many others. So there's no actual relation between red and green. Ordinal, they actually have an order, let's say young, old and you can clearly see that young is less than old in this case. Numeric basically is like one, two, five, real numbers. Six. So what would binary be? Well, binary can technically be numeric, zero or one, or categorical, true or false. Or, well, yeah. So this basically depends on how you actually want to represent your data. So now let's move on to uh, to Weka. What is Weka? Weka is a, a machine learning system that allows you to process data files and classify information, cluster information, etc. So it allows all these uh, common machine learning algorithms to perform this on a training and a test set and derive this into actual information that you can use. Weka was developed by the University of Waikato and it's located in New Zealand. And they developed the ARFF format, which is basically an attribute relation format, to represent data to be used by this program. We're going to be actually touching on how to use this program later on uh, in the series. So, but for now, I want to actually teach you how to uh, use this data and why it would be useful for the program. So, before before reviewing the actual uh, file format, let's state an example. Let's say your local post office has a system that determines the price of a package um, depending on its let's say, um, just to keep it simple, depending on its height and its width. So they've got this program and they've got this database. So they've got every transaction that they've made, the height, the weight, and the price that it had. So let's say yes. And somehow someone managed to delete the program. So they hired a um, software development agency to develop a new program. But instead of using just prefixed prices, they wanted to use this data that they already have and learn from this data to predict the prices of new items. So we've got this data set basically and we want to do it based only on the height and the width. I know practically you would also consider the length and the, the weight but just to keep it simple let's just do it like this. So the ARFF format is divided into two parts, the header and the body. In the header, we state first of all the relation. Oops, relation. Uh, in this case, let's say we're going for fees. So we've got two main attributes attribute height and attribute weight. It's important to mention what type uh, of data each attribute is, so we're going to go for numeric for both of them. Finally, we've got another attribute, which is a class. In this case, it's the price, the final price that it went for. We've also got that those data points here, and let's establish this as a set of all possible prices it can take. So then we've got the body. So this was the head and this is the body. Now, what does the body contain? First of all, it contains this data specifier 
and then it moves on to all the vectors of information. So this is where all the actual stuff comes in. Let's say 20, 20, and it went for one pound. And 25, 35, and it went for two pounds. 30, 39, and it went for three pounds. So we've got all this data in this file format, and we can reuse this data. This would be known as a training set. And then we can develop another set that contains 20, 20, 21, 25, 40, 41. So this is what classifiers are quite useful for, because we've got this data, we don't know what the price is, but we can determine which points it lies closest to to determine the price or possible class for that data point. We can also visualize this in a two-dimensional uh, graph, which is quite useful to see where the data is located and everything, and perform operations on this data. So we're going to leave it here for now, and I hope this was useful, and we'll go into this, we'll delve into more examples further on in this series. So until later, cheerio.